Hi, my name is Mrs. Otto. I'm from the Office of Social Studies. This week, I'm going to be teaching you about supply and demand. We are going to be learning about a new concept in social studies. We are going to be learning about economics. So I've provided you with a vocabulary card about economics. First, let's look at the picture. We can see a lemonade stand. So economics has something to do with the idea of a lemonade stand. Let's read the definition. How people make choices to get what they want. Okay, so if you have a lemonade stand, you are trying to earn money so that you can get what you want. I'm excited to learn about economics. How about you? Today we will learn to identify the ideas of supply and demand and how they affect markets. Let's unpack our objective. Supply is the number of goods and services that are available to the consumer. Goods are things that satisfy people's wants. Services are activities that satisfy people's wants. Demand. Demand is the number of goods and services consumers want. Consumers, as a reminder, are people who buy and or use goods and services to satisfy their wants. The last word we're going to unpack is markets. A market is a place where buyers and sellers exchange goods and services to satisfy wants. So it can be a physical place or it can be online. Has this ever happened to you? Listen to the scenario and see if you can relate. You're in the cereal aisle of a grocery store. You go to grab a box of your favorite cereal, but realize they are all out. You see the label where they normally are and notice that they are on sale for $1.79. You look at the surrounding labels and notice all the other cereal boxes are over $2. You realize that your favorite cereal is all gone because by buying them, other customers were getting a deal and saving money. How did it make you feel? What did you do? Today, you will be exploring the economic principles of supply and demand. When finished, you will apply what you know about supply and demand to the real world. Supply and demand. Let's look at the vocabulary card. Supply is the number of goods and services that are available to consumers. We are all consumers. You've probably used lots of goods and services already today. Look around your room that you're in right now. Are you watching me on a TV? That's a good. Are you watching me on the computer? That's a good. I'm teaching you right now. That's a service. Look around the room you're in. Do you see more goods? Tell me what you see. You're right. A sofa is a good. <laughs> You're right. That lamp is a good. You are surrounded by goods. You probably aren't surrounded, surrounded by so many services right now, but we know. It's, have you looked out the window? Is somebody cutting the grass? That's a service. So to remind myself, that means the number of those goods and services that are available to us consumers. Let's look at some examples. If you have six rolls of paper towels, then your supply is six. If you have 100 packs of tissues, then your supply is 100. If you have 12 tables in a restaurant, your supply is 12. Let's dive deeper into demand. 
The vocabulary card tells us that that is the number of goods and services consumers want. So supply is how many you have, demand is how many you want. Do you have more than one TV in your house? Do you have more than one person who needs a haircut in your house? Let's look at some examples. If six people want a roll of paper towels, then we can say the demand for paper towels is six. If 100 people want a pack of tissues, then we can say the demand for a pack of tissues is 100. If 12 groups of people want to eat dinner in your restaurant, then we can say the demand for a table at your restaurant is 12. When we're talking about supply and demand, the perfect thing would be if the supply and the demand were equal. So you can see on our balance, if there's three pizzas and three people, that would mean there's one pizza for every person. So our supply and our demand are balanced. If six people want pizza for lunch and there are only three pizzas, the demand is greater than the supply. This means that everybody is not going to get the pizza they want. Their wants are not going to be satisfied. If two people want pizza for lunch but there are only ten pizzas, that means that the demand is less than the supply. That means that everybody's wants will be satisfied. However, the market will have too much of a supply. Markets try to keep their supply and their demand balanced so that when you go to satisfy your wants, you can get what you want. However, when I went shopping this weekend, I saw a lot of empty shelves. There were certain supplies that are in greater demand. Think about why as you're looking at these images. This is what I saw when I went down the aisle where they had dish soap. <laughs> Notice how many empty spots there are? What does that tell us? That's right, it means that the supply is less than the demand. More people want it than they have. You can see that there are some things they have a lot of, but a lot of things they were out of. Look at this aisle. This is the aisle where they have frozen dinners. Things like pizzas or turkey and gravy. Dinners that are already prepared that just need to be reheated at your house. Do you notice that right now the demand is greater? Because there are lots and lots of open holes in this frozen food section. This is what I saw when I went down the cleaning aisle. Normally you would see all different kinds of cleaning products. Can you think of a reason why the supply for clean-in products might be limited? Why is there a greater demand? This is what I saw on the other side of the cleaning products. As you can see, there were some things that they had a supply of, but there's a lot of empty spots, which means the demand for those products was greater than the supply. This is what I saw when I went down the soup aisle. Do you see empty shelves? When you go into the store, you might see one or two of the goods or the products missing. But for the most part, if supply and demand is working, then the store should have the shelves full for you when you come shopping. You'll know that they have too much if you see them on the ends of the aisles for sale. It seems like a whole bunch of places in the store were missing items. This is what I saw when I went down the toilet paper aisle. This, do you see all those empty spaces? Those should be full of goods or products. This is telling us that demand was greater than the supply.
Now, when I went down the cereal aisle, you can see that some of the cereals were fine, but there were some cereals that were in greater demand that are now empty. And this aisle, this aisle is where I should have been able to find paper towels. And it was completely empty. Here were more cleaning products. And you can see that the demand is definitely not balanced with the supply. For the supply and the demand to be balanced, markets want to have enough supplies for the demand of the consumers. I created this anchor chart for you about supply and demand. Let's look in the very center. Supply is on the side of the Venn diagram, demand is on the side of the Venn diagram, and balance is in the middle. That's where they overlap so that they have just enough supply for the demand. Supply is the amount of goods and services there are to buy. A large supply means lots of choices, and a small supply means fewer choices. Demand is how many people want to buy the goods and services. Low demand means few people want it. High demand means lots of people want it. Stores try to balance their supplies to meet the demand. Supply and demand make prices go up and down in the market. Cost goes up with a small supply, but large demand. Price goes down with a large supply and a small demand. Let's review your economic vocabulary words of supply, demand, and market. If you think your answer, the answer is A, you're going to holler out A. If you think the answer is B, you're going to holler out B. If you think the answer is C, you can holler out C. If there's somebody sleeping and you can't holler out, get a piece of paper and you can write the letter and show me. Let's get ready. Number one. Supply. Is it A, the prices of the products and services are decided by supply and demand, B, how much of something is available, or C, the number of things that consumers, people who are buying, want? Is it supply A, B, or C? Awesome, you're right. It's B, how much of something is available. Let's go on to demand. It's either going to be A or C. What do you think? Tell me, is demand the prices and products of services are decided by supply and demand? Or is it C, the number of things that consumers, people who are buying want? Show me, holler out or tell me. You're right, it's C, the number of things that consumers, people who are buying want. Let's see if the only one left market is really A. Is market really the prices of the products and services are decided by supply and demand? Thumbs up or thumbs down? Do you agree or disagree? Yes, you're right. It's A. Great job. Okay, think about what you learned about supply and demand. Let's apply it to the world, real world. We are now washing our hands more often, using hand sanitizer when soap and water are not available, and wearing a mask when we are out in public areas. What goods are in high demand now that we are doing these things? Make a list. Do you have your list? Shout out one of the things off your list to me. That's awesome. That's a great list. Think about why these things are in high demand. Think about the word supply. Tell me, why are goods, these goods in high demand?
Let's go back to our job. It said we were going to learn to identify the ideas of supply and demand and how they affect markets. We talked about supply, demand, and market, and we just did a little try it. 